like to show you some of the Castle Map Pack. The Castle Map Pack launches on April 8th. It's three maps. Uh, they are vehicular based. Um, they're also kind of fun. If you want to see them in action, we have a trailer that we would like to show you. And that's not it. That's the splash page that I forgot to go to. But now here's the trailer. <laughs> Mr. Tom Potter is going to take us through the three maps. He's going to tell you a little bit about their fiction background, a little bit about how they play, and then some of the nuances of each of the maps. Um, Bernie, you got to see him last night. Yeah. What did you think? I love it. I mean, a big part of what we do for Red vs. Blue is take inspiration from the environments. When we started the show, you know, all the characters look the exact same, and they're just different colors. So. Uh, to really kind of go out there and get new ideas for writing episodes, we'd always just wander around in the maps and see, you know, what's inspiring. Like, essentially, Red versus Blue boils down to how do we make a jeep and a skull and a base and a flag funny, you know? And so walking around in the environment is just the best way to come up with new ideas. So anytime there's a new map, that's what I do is I just, like, while everyone is running around shooting around me, I'm, like, wandering around and looking at the walls or the corner or something like that yeah. and dying. That's my excuse, at least, that I use. So what'd you guys think? Did that look pretty cool? Well, I'd have to say, having worked on this, uh, honestly, I think these are some of the best maps that we've done to date. Um, as you probably noticed from the video, where Majestic was all about infantry-based combat, we're moving back to vehicular combat here. So uh, if we want to just jump into the individual maps. So the first one we're going to talk about is Daybreak. So Daybreak uh, is a Oni research facility on the planet of Oban. Does anybody know Oban? No Oban fans? <laughs> so Oban is not very popular now, but I think after we play this map, it will be very popular. Uh, as you can tell, this is actually early concept art right here. Um, w when we were thinking about what to do with this map, we, we really wanted a map that was sort of a nod to the, the Halo maps of long ago that were you know green grass, blue sky, uh, no pine trees, though. Um, so this is kind of where the inspiration for the map started. So there's mostly a terrain map. We've got two bases. Uh, the two bases are asymmetrical. The map itself is also asymmetrical. Uh, there's a lot of um, height variation and terrain variation. A lot of because it's it's terrain. There's a lot of different vari uh, variation that we can do in the environment. Um, this this is a top-down map. So it, you can notice we've got the mongoose and the warthog. Uh, and you'll also notice down there tucked in the corner is the banshee. So de developing a map is always very interesting. Uh, you can think you've got it, and then something, a curveball, comes out of nowhere, and you do, do a bunch of changes. So in this particular case, we had a pretty good map. We felt we had a pretty good map. Uh, CA play tests all the time, sometimes three times a day. And we're always generating feedback. We're always trying to make sure that we're, we're making a really fun map. This particular map was fun, but we, we kind of felt like there was something missing. Uh, and I think it was actually Max, the, the president of the company, was sitting in on a play test. And he said, you know what? You know what would be really cool in this map? The Banshee. And I think everybody in the room at the time kind of groans like, oh, no. Because we knew that was a really good idea, but it was going to mean a lot of extra work for the entire team. Because we had to change, basically what you see now is where it ended up, but we had to change a lot of the terrain. We had to change the verticality of the map. Uh, but I, I think when you actually play it, you'll, you'll understand what it adds to the map. I think it's, it's important to know. I think a lot of people, when they hear oh, the Banshees in the map, that means that hey, somebody gets in there and they just dominate everybody. We actually spent a lot of time trying to figure out how to prevent that. 
if it's a little difficult to tell when you're looking at the top down, but uh, because of the height variation in the terrain um, and some of the, you can kind of tell there's some rock spires that pop up. When you're flying in the Banshee, there are a lot of obstacles that you have to fly around. So you, you, part of your attention is on not crashing into things. Part of your attention is on people who are shooting you at the ground. And it's very easy for someone to sneak up and skyjack. It, you know, whether you have a jetpack or you just climb up on top of something. Uh, I've seen it happen a number of times in play tests. Uh, you know, it's, it, it's, it's just a really cool dynamic. And uh, personally, I, I'm really glad that we, we put this into the map. Um, so yeah, you can, you can see from the top down that it's asymmetric. There's a, a cave, I can't quite see the orientation. I think it's on the north end of what you guys are looking at uh, where we have the rocket launcher. So there's always a mad dash to that spot at the beginning of a match. Uh, probably wait, wait, before you go, yeah. um, has anybody played Hungry Hungry Hippos? Um, that bottom base on this map is totally a Hungry Hungry Hippo. That's like the only thing I can think about, like with that, its neck and everything. That was our I just inspiration, wanna... actually. Oh, so yeah, we started. dude, totally worked. Sorry, I'll be quiet. <laughs> so uh, something else to point out, uh, if you're looking at the two bases, One's round, one's square, but there's there's other asymmetries in, in both the base design and the map design that teams can take advantage of, and that's especially important in CTF. So I'm just being completely honest with you guys. This is probably one of my favorite maps that we've made to date, and when you play CTF on this map, it's incredible. So as a producer, it's my job to kind of keep people in line, make sure they're working on the right things. I'm basically the fun killer. In this particular case, uh, when we do play tests, there's something very specific that we're looking for in feedback. And whenever we play this map on CTF, everyone forgets why they're in there. They just go into ultra competitive mode, start yelling at each other. So I have to come in and tell them, guys, you know, we're here for a reason. And then they ignore me. Uh, <laughs> but if, if you haven't played it uh, on the show floor, you definitely check out Daybreak for CTF. It's, it's just incredible. It's actually, as, as far as I know, this is the highest scoring CTF map of, since they've been keeping user scores. Uh, when, you know, when we get people outside the studio to play the map, this is, has sky, uh, scored the highest. So it's, it's, it's a really, really great map. So this that you're looking at now is Outcast. This is also early concept art. Uh, this takes place on a planet that has been untouched by the Covenant. It's sort of on the, the, the very edge of UNSC space. And right now it's inhabited by insurrectionists that are there uh, mining. And that is kind of reflected in, in, in kind of the map design itself, where wherever we can, we, we try to tell a visual story uh, through the visuals. Uh, try, <laughs> sorry try to tell a story through the visuals. And in this case, because it's a, a hidden insurrectionist base, all the architecture that you see is, is kind of tucked into corners and hidden. It's kind of underneath rocks. Uh, and it, it's reflected in other places, just in the general map design. It's a very porous map. This is the largest of the three. On the, what you're seeing here is kind of on the perimeter uh, of the map, which is basically open to the sky. If you were to travel to the left of the screen there, you get into a cave system. So you're looking at a couple different shots here of, of placement. So in this map, we've got power vehicles. So we've got a, a really interesting uh, combination of power vehicles. We've got the Mantis on one side of the map and then the Wraith on the other. So you would imagine with two power vehicles like that, it'd be pretty easy for a team just to lock down uh, an area and, and dominate the other. But I think this, that's where the, the map design itself comes in and, and the layout. If you try to travel into the interior pore spaces, it's really easy for infantry to, to combat the, the power vehicles. There are a lot of you know, caverns or tunnels or there's a lot of cover that people can hide behind. So it's it's easy for people to pop out and shoot you with a plasma pistol. So it's not like you can grab the wraith and go rogue and just kill everybody. You know, you really need to work with your team. Yeah, if you look in the, the, the bottom picture there, um, 
you know, if you're in the wraith in the bottom left, it's pretty easy for people on the other team to flank you uh, through that bottom route unless you're working with somebody. Outcast is also the return of uh, Dominion. This is a Dominion map. And that's, it's a very interesting layout for Dominion. You've got two uh, bases sort of on the, each extremity of the map. And in the interior, there's a more natural map. Sorry, uh, a more natural base. So now you're looking at perdition. This is also very early concept art. Um, the inspiration for this was uh, the, this map itself is set in the undercity of Pilvros, right before a reactor is set to go critical. And contrasting this with the other maps, it's very architectural. You know, there, you're not going to find any rocks or, or rock walls in this map. It's 100% it's industrial. It's a fairly large map with uh, some really interesting interiors, some cool shortcuts uh, across the map. It's got some long sight lines. I'll give you another shot here. I mentioned visual storytelling earlier. Uh, this is another example. There's a, a, like a tram system that passes through the map. We try to get motion into the map and you know make it feel as alive as we can. It's not quite as cool just in a, a single screenshot, but when you see it in action, it's really cool. Perdition supports uh, you know all, all the, the the game modes, including Extraction, King of the Hill. King of the Hill is is really awesome. I I really like that one. I'll give you a nice top down shot here. So that thing in the bottom, that bottom screenshot. That's the reactor. So it's a really cool landmark. You know, it's, it's something that you can see through a number of places on the map. It's a good rallying point, good place to call out. And that's something that we try to do as much as we can is give individual call outs to people as they're playing through the map. You know, it's really, it, it's helpful for, for players to be able to call out where they are. And you know, it's pretty obvious that, hey, I'm by the reactor. There's a giant reactor in the corner. Uh, I think my most common call out is um, one shot on my ex. I'm always dead. <laughs> my bad. And Jessica, you were saying this is the one that reminded you of turf, right? Yeah, mm -hmm. I love um, city maps. Yeah, it reminded me of turf and also reminded me of the uh, condemned map from Reach with that center hub that you went through that, in this particular part right here without the low gravity, though. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, along with these maps, we're also bringing back multi team in a big way, and uh, we've been playing this a lot, and it's been absolutely fantastic running a 6x2 on here, because the teams uh, are getting into Warthogs and doing lots of laps, especially on Perdition, and then on Outcast, they've got these wonderful like base structures where you can have teams of two locking each of these areas down, and it's really like leverages the map in a great way. Yeah, and multi-team on Perdition is especially cool. Um, you you kind of have the choice to like, you know, hop and hog with the teammate and roam around the outside of the map. And there are a lot of different uh, channels. It's not like the vehicles have to take this one route. As you saw with just the reactor that was on the screen, you can head behind the reactor, which is where the rockets spawn, or you can go ahead right through the dish or right around it. And um, it's cool to see multi-team take off on these maps. I think it plays really well. Yeah. So we should probably say it super clearly. I know we've said that we've been building multi-team, but we haven't said when it comes out. So just in case you haven't put two and two together, multi-team comes out with the Castle Map Pack on April 8th. That's right, right, Kevin? Yeah, okay. absolutely. Yeah.